Good morning, everyone. Um, great to see so many people here at the first uh, keynote of the day. Um, so as I said, my name is Rob Harper. I'm director and head of retail services for PayPal in the UK. Um, and what that means is I'm responsible for bringing PayPal to the UK high street. In the next 20 minutes, I'm going to talk about the need to look beyond payment to unlock the full potential of mobile commerce. When we look at the future of payments, all indicators suggest that technology will increasingly enable new and richer experiences to take place between you as retailers and your consumers. So the first slide I have up here is, is, is a picture of the Star Trek Enterprise. And you may well be wondering, he's gone mad. What on earth has the Star Trek Enterprise got to do with PayPal? Well, let me explain. PayPal has long been going where no payment company has been before. Our founders had a simple vision to enable people to beam money to each other using Palm Pilots, which were the, the iconic personal organizers of the 1990s. They recognized that everyone needed money to pay and to get paid. But traditional ways of payment for person-to-person -person payments, like cash and checks, simply weren't good enough for this new era in digital commerce. So they thought of a 21st century payment method that would be more convenient, secure, and could be accessed from anywhere, a kind of digital wallet. On New Year's Eve 1999, Star Trek Scotty, at a San Francisco launch event, beamed a million dollars to thousands of people all over America thereby launching PayPal. Looking back, this mobile vision would prove amazingly ahead of its time. So let's fast forward 15 years, and PayPal today is one of the leaders in online and mobile commerce. Last year, PayPal processed over $180 billion in payments. That's an incredible figure. And 27 billion of these, so nearly a fifth, were through mobile channels. We're all about making it easier for people to pay and check out quickly and securely as possible. Ultimately, making it easier for your business to connect to your consumer. So why am I here today? I'm here to talk about how a more demanding consumer with mobile as their chosen tool is driving innovation in payments. It's not simply about replicating a car-based experience within a mobile phone, but it's about delivering new, richer experiences that add value to that merchant-consumer relationship. And using technology like mobile to overcome the frustrations and limitations of the old ways to pay. Commerce has moved on at a rapid pace. And traditional structures and business strategies have evolved and moved on too. We no longer look in terms of isolation at single channels and single touch points with consumers. But we look at multi-channel or omni-channel with the need to make sure that you connect with your consumer, whether that be online, on their mobile, or indeed in store. People today can choose how they interact with your brand, as I said, online, on store, and in mobile. And it's a mix and match of these channels or touch points and the ability to connect correctly within these touch points, which is critical for success. All of us in this room want a quicker, better shopping experience, regardless of whether we browse on a website, order on a smartphone, or visit a store. In the consumer, in their mind, it's no longer about online, offline, or mobile. It's simply about shopping. And that's the view businesses must adopt also. To back this up, I've got some, some stats from the IMRG Capgemini quarterly benchmarking report, which shows that the percentage of consumers that are using a smartphone or a tablet to pay is growing rapidly. And shoppers on mobile phones and tablets 
has now overtaken desktop for the first time. And I think this is huge. These results show and demonstrate that, invest, that the investment being made in mobile optimization is, is encouraging and is making people shop uh, across this mobile platform. And it also demonstrates that we're entering a new era in money. We can think of the first era as cash and checks, the second era, debit and credit cards, and the third era now is undoubtedly mobile. But the question to all of you in this room, are we, are you doing enough? Incredibly, last year, UK businesses lost 1.5 billion pounds in mobile commerce sales, with payment friction cited as one of the leading reasons why shoppers abandon the checkout process on a mobile device. Just think of that, 1.5 billion pounds lost in commerce due to poor consumer experiences on a mobile device. So clearly, there's a lot to do. To help me visualize this, I'm going to introduce to you Smartphone Steve. And Smartphone Steve is going to help us to show the importance of optimizing your mobile experiences. Now, Steve here loves his smartphone, like all of us probably do in this room. His whole life is on his phone. He searches and socializes, browses and blogs, plays and pays on his smartphone. Now, Steve's a busy chap like all of us, time poor. He spent time online researching for a future purchase because he likes to research online. But before making his final decision, he decides to use his mobile phone to make his transaction. His mobile phone is his preferred device in terms of how he wants to pay. Like Steve, more and more consumers are using their mobile phone to purchase, and this is backed up by those stats from IMRG, as I've talked before. And very much what we're seeing is it's consumers are using their phone because it means that they're buying on their terms and on their device. But a question for you in this room, how easy do you make it for your consumers to transact on their mobile phones? A Harris poll last December told us that 47% of consumers failed to complete a purchase because the checkout process took too long. With 41% saying the checkout, that checkout was too difficult on their mobile phone. Now look at that again. Nearly 50%, so 47% of consumers failed to complete a checkout process because it was too difficult on their mobile phone. So clearly, there's a, there's a lot of room for improvement there. So imagine Steve is a new customer to your, your website, and he's accessing that website from his mobile phone. Think about the number of fields that he has to complete before he's enabled to make a purchase with you. So let's take out our mobile phones and think about, so when he joins you, he needs to put his title in there, his name, his surname, his date of birth, his mobile number or another contact number, email address, then he confirms his email address. You ask him to create a password, then he confirms that password, and like me, probably forgets it after he's maybe done one transaction. He's asked them for a security question, some random question with an answer that, again, he may well forget. Then it's postcode, the county he lives in, maybe his, uh, his house number. So already we're presenting many, many barriers to Steve before he's in a position to check out. Then, after all of his thing, finger and thumb gymnastics, it's difficult enough to say, let alone do it on the smartphone, he has to then take out his wallet. So he's gone from his mobile phone, interacting with the mobile phone. Then he has to take out his wallet, take out a payment card, whether a debit and credit card, put his name in, the card number, the expiry date, 
the card security code. Finally, maybe after that, he's done. But no, that's not the case. It's then accept terms and conditions. Maybe opt into your marketing preferences or maybe those from, uh, from your partners. And only after that process, a very lengthy process, he's in a position where he's enabled to complete that checkout process. Now, I'm just exhausted talking about it this morning. Just think about poor old smartphone Steve as he's trying to complete that transaction. Or like 50% of people like smartphone Steve, he's given up. So when we look at the, the amount of interaction smartphone Steve will need to have with your brands, typically, to make a transaction, he probably has to tap on his phone 140 times to complete that checkout process. 140 times. That's such a challenge for, for anyone, and, and it's backed up by the figures on card abandonment. Again, when we look at some additional statistics, we see that 51% of UK consumers don't feel safe entering their credit card details online, whether that be through desktop or indeed mobile. And this is an incredible statistic now. 63% of consumers are less likely to buy from the same company through another purchase channel after abandoning a mobile transaction due to a poor performance. Let's just pause and reflect on that, and I'll repeat it again. 63% of consumers are less likely to buy from the same company through a different purchase channel, so maybe desktop or indeed on, on in-store, after abandoning a mobile transaction due to a poor performance. So as well as the lost revenue that you will potentially see through payment friction at the time of transaction, you also risk losing money in the future given that incredible statistic. But you'll be glad to know it doesn't need to be that way. We can say that PayPal here can come to the rescue. By direct comparison, and you can see how happy smartphone Steve is up there, had he logged in and checked out through PayPal, he could have completed that transaction in just 19 taps. Just 19 taps, that's a staggering 121 less taps or keystrokes to complete a transaction than a traditional payment method. That's an incredible statistic, I hope you'd agree with me. So our philosophy is very much that we believe that people shouldn't spend time to spend money. That's why our online and mobile payment solutions are optimized to be seamless, convenient, and secure for people like Smartphone Steve. A recent Ipsos Murray uh, survey shows that 49% of mobile shoppers say that PayPal is their preferred mobile payment tool. So nearly 50% of shoppers prefer to use PayPal on mobile. And let's just compare that 50% preference to that 63% drop-off that people are seeing in traditional uh, uh, payment methods. And then 46% of online shoppers believe PayPal is the most convenient way to pay. So when we look at mobile commerce, let's be honest, all of us in the room and, and people like Smartphone Steve don't wake up in the morning and think, I'm going to make a payment today. How exciting is that? Yeah? Instead, he and us, we think about the things we want to buy. But as I've talked through in the statistics, payment is an important part of the overall shopping experience. Like Steve, I can use my mobile phone to buy my morning cup of coffee. Maybe I buy a shirt during my lunch break, whether that be online or in-store pay for my parking, or indeed order my takeaway on the way home. It's never been a busier time than today for mobile payments. But we believe we're just at the beginning of this mobile revolution. And we're ahead of something that's going to be much, much bigger. The latest statistics we're seeing is that there will be 15 billion connected devices by the end of 2015. 
and 40 billion by the end of 2020. So 40 billion by the end of 2020 means that this is a phenomenon that simply cannot be ignored. When we look at mobile commerce, we believe the best way to deliver a rich experience is on the devices that your consumers have in their pockets today. PayPal, we're platform agnostic, so your consumers can choose to use their iPhone, their Android phone, or indeed their Windows phone to transact with you. So we're working across the full spectrum of commerce and mobile platforms to enable payment. And we're putting people at the heart of this innovation. We're also looking beyond payment at how we can address some of the pain points in that wider consumer journey, whether that be introducing solutions that enable our customers and your customers to pay maybe at the table during a restaurant, to order ahead during their, uh, on their mobile phone, to pick up their takeaway on their way home, to enable them to use their mobile phone on the high street by simply tapping or scanning at the point of sale, as well as optimizing a rich mobile experience that enables people like Steve to check out on your sites in as little as 19 taps. To help show this, I'm going to just show a, a, a video now that highlights the future of payments with PayPal at Westfield London. So what the film showed you there are three key experiences that we can deliver to consumers from the PayPal app. The first one is where we're able to transfer the profile picture that's, that a PayPal consumer stores into their PayPal wallet. We transfer that profile picture and their name into the point of sale system. And that's a solution that you would have seen at, at GBK. So to make a transaction, the cashier or, or the, the person in the restaurant simply rings through the order, they click the PayPal button, and you would have seen Caitlin's picture appeared on that till. They just need to check what she looks like, ask her her name, and that's it, transaction done. So no need to rummage around for payment terminals and lose that engagement with the customer. The other experience we showed there was the ability to use a payment code in the form of a barcode to enable you to you pay using your mobile phone when you park at Westfield in London. So again, it's how we can use mobile, the phone that the consumer has in their pockets, to enable a seamless, convenient, and quick paying experience to take place within an offline environment. You would have also seen there the ability where we can actually push closed-loop offers 
into the phone and also into our online channels. So that means we can f actually work with you to fund incentives to drive consumers to across your channels. In this instance, we use the incentive of a free day's parking at Westfield London to drive consumers in, into Westfield and, and bring them into the mall there. So I think this really gives a good example of how, with PayPal, we're much, much more than just a payment company. We're there about working with you to connect you to drive um, engagement with your consumers, whether that be through payment technology, whether that be mobile, or whether that be through you know, innovation such as closed loop offers. So my last slide of today before we move into the, the QA section. Um, so to summarize, the smartphone has become an essential part of our everyday life for, for millions of Britons and beyond. Transactions on the, on the mobile phone are on the rise. And we see that Gartner predicts that the number of people using mobile payments worldwide will increase to th nearly 350 million by 2015, with upwards of a trillion dollars in payments globally. And all indicators suggest, as I've said earlier, that mobile will enable new, richer consumer experiences to take place. So to summarize, my first point is that we believe that shopping is poised for a profound transformation. It's all about tapping into what consumers are already doing today, putting him or her at the center of your omni-channel strategy. Secondly, a new set of drivers are emerging as shopper shopping evolves. And we see that mobile is very much propelling this change. So mobile at the point of sale, as the point of sale, sensors, beacons, developers in the cloud are all combining to drive innovation in payments. And thirdly, PayPal as a payments platform is uniquely placed to help you deliver your omnichannel strategy. With innovation in our heart, we can play a central role in helping you shape the future of payments. So when Star Trek hit our screens nearly 15 years ago, 50 years ago, shopping on a mobile device such as this one here would have seemed like science fiction. But yesterday's science fiction is today's retail reality. That's the end of my presentation. Thank you for your time. If you'd like to talk to me or indeed the rest of the PayPal team, come and visit our stand next to the charge and chill out zone. Um, I'd now like to open up the floor for, for any questions anyone may well have. Hello. Thank you very much for your time. Um, we all know that it makes uh, headlines in the national press when network connectivity for credit card or debit card transaction goes down and people are unable to use their cards in shops. The PayPal mobile payment system seems to rely on network connectivity from consumer devices. And surely, yeah, we all know that's sort of a bit patchy. Um, I doubt that the Westfield parking lot with all the concrete has a great connectivity. What's the, the statistic on how many transactions succeed or the other way around fail due to network connectivity issues? Well, I think you're absolutely right. You know, data is, is a critical part of, of mobile, of, of delivering richer consumer experiences. So that's why we're seeing you know, many organizations such as Westfield really invest, investing in, in, in local Wi-Fi to make sure we're making that Wi-Fi quick and convenient to access so they can deliver a, a really rich experience. And actually, if you go into Westfield London, you know, there's Wi-Fi in all levels, even in the, pay, in, in the parking areas, which means that you can actually seamlessly and quickly pay with your mobile phone. I stand corrected. What is there a statistic on the number of successes? You know, I, I, there, there probably is. Um, I don't have, I thought I had, yeah, there was enough statistics in that presentation. Thanks. Sorry. Hi there. Um, a core component of mobile payments is going to be loyalty and kind of the retail space. Um, if you look at Weave and, and people like that, what they're doing. Just wondering how uh, PayPal's mobile solutions interact with loyalty systems um, and whether there are any uh, plans for that. Yeah, uh, that's a really good point. And, and I think, 
you know, central to the theme that, you know, to deliver uh, a mobile solution, it's not, rep it's not about replicating just a card-based solution within the mobile phone. Um, so mobile is critical. So you can actually uh, assume, or actually you can, store your loyalty cards at certain retailers within your PayPal wallet. So we're moving forward. When I transact to the point of sale, rather than today where maybe I have to you know, have multiple interactions with that point of sale, which takes time, so maybe get my payment card out, my loyalty card out, my paper coupon that probably actually I've left in the wallet or in the drawer at home. So rather than having three, four interactions with the point of sale or indeed in the checkout process, we want to bring that into one simple interaction. So we, we will be able to pass through loyalty details that are stored in the wallet, coupons that are stored in the wallet. So there's one interaction which means I never lose my loyalty points and I always redeem my coupons. So we're very much on the consumer's side. Hi, um, I was wondering now that eBay has... Um, sorry, I, sorry. Now that eBay has spun out um, PayPal as a standalone entity, what, impacts, um, is that, what impact is that going to have and, and what changes can we expect to see? Yeah, so for those of you who don't know, um, so this week um, we announced that uh, the board has decided to split uh, eBay into two separate um, standalone companies, so eBay and PayPal. And very much the, the view of the board was is that by splitting out the two companies, it would enable those companies to be best positioned to grow in the future. Um, that was an announcement that took place this year, but in terms of the here and now, we're very much focused on, on delivering our strategy, helping you connect with your consumers, and that will be the case for the next 12 months until the completion of, of that spin-out. Hello? Sorry, you'll need to grab that. Hello, um, I use PayPal a lot, uh, increasingly more on my Brilliant. phone. Brilliant, that's good to hear. Um, but I also use it on my iPhone, and I just wondered with Apple Pay entering the market, how's that going to change the dynamic moving forward? Yeah, so I think it's you know, interesting. You know, it, it seems almost every week, if not every month, that there's a, a new entrant into the, the mobile commerce or indeed the mobile wallet space. But we're very much focused on delivering great experiences to all of our consumers, whether they have an iPhone, whether they have an Android phone, or indeed whether they have a, a Windows phone. I think it's critical that, that wallets like PayPal are platform agnostic and funding source agnostic to enable you to deliver the best experiences to all of your consumers. Um, you mentioned the, um, if you mentioned the stat that 47% um, of consumers fail to complete, why do you think retailers are not making their mobile transactions effective enough? Is it ignorance in the fact that they don't know how to or just lack of desire to do it? I think it's, it's, re it's a realization that you know, consumers want to use their phones to transact. Um, there is a tremendous amount of work happening with, with mobile optimization, but probably not a, not a pace that's kept up with the, with, with the way all of us are using our mobile phones today. So I think, you know, I think Smartphone Steve really demonstrates that 140 clicks in a, in a mobile, on a mobile phone is just, just crazy. So if you can condense that down to 19 tip clicks or taps, as I've shown, then it really does make sense. So I think we're, we're here to help. We, you know, we, we work with multiple partners across the ecosystem, as I said, to help you know, optimize that mobile experience. I, I'm being told to wrap up now, so um, I think probably time's up. But please you know, do come by the, the stand. Um, we'll be there for the rest of the day and be delighted to talk to you about how we can help. Thank you.